I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Good evening. The troubles in the United States over Ebola, over the market turmoil, certainly over the ineffectiveness of the airstrikes against the Islamic State, are major concerns for the American people. In addition, we have the election coming up in a few weeks' time. However, the planet is also watching the crisis in China. This is Hong Kong, and Gordon Chang of Forbes.com joins me tonight. The Chinese people are quite capable of taking care of this themselves. The American people are not needed. However, it is good to watch this because the relationship between China and the United States, between China and its neighbors, is profound for success in the 21st century. And right now, I would say that the Chinese Communist Party is handling the protests in Hong Kong for democracy, for promises made, about as badly as it can be done. In fact, it looks like they picked up the playbook formerly held by the Soviet Union, and we know how that worked out. Gordon, a very good evening to you. The most recent headline is that the Chinese uh, Hong Kong police beat a protester and beat him on video. That is, of course, dominating the news in Asia. There'll be prosecutions, investigations. But generally speaking, the protesters have gained the upper hand because they've not been violent. Now I see, according to your reporting here, that the Chinese are helping the cause of the protesters by banning books. And we welcome Arthur Waldron, Lauder Professor of International Relations at the University of Pennsylvania tonight to comment. What banned books, Gordon? Well, there are a number of banned books because there are four authors who have been uh, taken off the uh, distribution list. And that's made them more popular in China, John, which is really good because now they're getting wider distribution in China books, and yeah, around right. the world. Arthur, uh, the banning of books by the Communist Party. I thought these guys were up to date. Xi Jinping, modern guy, a dictator we can admire, understand social media. Banning books, Arthur? Did, did I miss something about their education? Are they stuck back in 1950? You were completely misinformed about Xi. I would be surprised if he was even familiar with the foundational classics of Chinese civilization. He's been raised on a, a pure diet of... Of, of, of Marxism. But uh, the first thing to remember is that since the 10th century, the highest peak of status in China has been occupied by intellectuals. And those intellectuals have gotten there by an extremely fair, non bribable examination system for which, in theory, anyone was eligible. For So for hundreds of years, uh, intellectual achievement and worldly position have gone hand in hand. And even though that's no longer the truth today, uh, the Chinese have perhaps greater respect for intellectual voices than any other people. What's just happened is that the works of probably the greatest living Chinese intellectual, who was an 84-year-old man named uh, Ying Shi Yu, Yu is his surname, Y-U, uh, who lives in this country and has been an emigre. He's never lived in communist China. Uh, he uh, uh, has published really on every thing there is. He's taught at uh, Harvard. He's been a professor at Harvard, a professor at Yale, a professor at Princeton, the only person ever to do that and in that order. Uh, he is a man of uh, tremendous erudition, good sense of humor, uh, very modest, low-key, but he has a gift for, uh, uh, for the zinger. And uh, his works are widely admired. Last time in China, I was in China, the, the bookshelves were full of them. He writes about everything from uh, classical Chinese literature to geography to politics. For instance, years ago, he started writing about something he feared called Chinese fascism. He he may have been some uh, he may have been onto something. Uh, today, he talked about uh, why are the Chinese people um, enslaving themselves. Uh, he was asked, uh, why doesn't he go back to China? Because they'd give him a big welcome. And he said a few words in Chinese to the effect that Confucius, who lived at a time when China was divided into states, never visited the state of Qin, Q 
QIN, which was known to be uh, the most atrociously and cruelly managed of the states. Confucius went to the moment. And he just said, well, Confucius never went to Qin. I'm not going to go um, to China. And these are words that really hit like an arrow. And uh, we cannot afford to underestimate if you think that the Soviet dissidents had a tremendous effect, which they did, uh, Chinese dissidents, uh, wit with the language, uh, and just plain the honesty of standing up uh, has a huge effect. And if you ask any Chinese who is more to be respected, Professor Yu or Xi Jinping, they would just immediately say, well, of course, Professor Yu, because he is a great intellectual, whereas Xi is nothing more than a politician. And all of us Chinese spit on politicians and always have. Arthur, what is your connection with Professor Yu? Well, uh, when I was an undergraduate and a graduate student, Long ago, 40, almost 40 years ago in Cambridge, Massachusetts, he was my professor. I then was his colleague when I was a professor at Princeton University. Uh, I'm a friend of his, and I have been active with him, although I don't see him all that often, active with him on uh, causes promoting uh, freedom in China, the publication of dissident things, the presentation of lectures by uh, visitors from China, just generally trying to keep the, uh, keep the idea that the Chinese are, 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 are people who, who have the same uh, 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 rights, God-given rights that we do, just keep that alive. And he, he, he does a great job. Arthur, it seems to me that he is like the one man who stands up to the mighty People's Republic, and he is one man who will not be bowed by them. And this seems to me to be so inspirational, not just to people in this country, but to the Chinese people. And that's why he has become such a symbol, not just in Hong Kong, not just in Taiwan, not just in the United States, but in the People's Republic of China. And there's the puzzle for me. Gentlemen, I present to you, the, I know I'm all process. They know this, right? They're not. I mean, they got the internet just like us. M no, Arthur, I appeal to you. No, no. I mean, the the, the bosses. They yeah. know. They know that Yu Yingxi is a major intellectual figure. They ban his books. They know that's going to sell his books. It puts him at the top of the pile just because he writes about sunflower student protests in Taiwan and he's banned. Now, do they want trouble? This is like an arsonist standing around watching his work, Arthur. Well, I think that they are very, very foolish uh, because uh, what they're really showing is that here they are, these big, strong people with millions of police and army and all the rest, and some guy has written some words on a piece of paper, right. and they're all standing there trembling in front of it. He uses the word sunflower. It, it's just... It's just uh, it, but what Gordon said has to be, has to be followed up. This is a man who's absolutely calm, relaxed, at ease with himself, but he is completely fearless. And he is not in any way uh, to be won over by China. If they could offer him the biggest amount of money and the biggest party and the biggest welcome and all the things that a lot of people would go for. And they have actually, Arthur. In yeah, fact, they've they done have. that and they've continually and offered just, that to him. He'd just, flick, he'd just flick his finger and say, well, you know, forget about it. You know. And he, he's the, 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 the almost the casualness with which he dismisses the entire enterprise of the People's Republic. Did you China expect this to come, insult. Arthur? Did you expect him to be banned? That this that this sophisticated uh, leadership in Beijing would be this crude? Did well, you? I don't think they're that sophisticated, and I've always expected that you. I'm, I'm surprised actually that there have been periods when he was published. And one of the good things in China until recently has been that more and more good books are being published in Chinese because the censors aren't smart enough to read books, so they work on newspapers and TV shows. But uh, sure, they're going to ban him. 
Uh, it's like the old story about the Soviet dissident mother typing out war and peace in the days when you had to type underground things. And the father says, well, look, you can buy it at the bookstore. And she says, our kids will only read things that are typed. Uh, they will only read right, right, that right. which is forbidden. So by doing this, they have made everybody in China say, look, I've got to read some of the stuff this guy wrote. Arthur, I really do. Arthur Waldron is Lauder Professor of International Relations at the University of Pennsylvania, Gordon Chang of Forbes.com. I'm John Batchelor. <laughs>